have you here. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. You have just arrived from Shidna. We have indeed. From, uh, from the farm. From the farm. Yes. You are living there. I am living there. We have... Um, all, all year round? All year round, basically, for the last, well, for the last year. We, we finished the repairs on the house this time last year. So I've now done a whole season which is exciting. I mean, we, we, we haven't been full-time because we've spent most of this year in the Delta, but whenever we weren't filming, we were back home and, you know, living in a very pastoral way, which has been, for me, a, just a, a luxury. You are living on a hill? We live on a hillside. And, um, and you see... We have a view all the way down till as far as Posto Varol, you know, sort of miles away. I mean, it is absolute paradise. I never thought I'd be lucky enough to live in such a beautiful place. Um, you have electricity, we you have, have electricity, internet. We have uh, fiber optic, Wi-Fi. I mean, this is, you know, and, and the back fence is Pietro Crayoloi National Park. So the, sometimes you, I mean, last night we were hearing... <laughs> literally 100 yards away uh, and the wild boar were, were just there on the edge of the forest but if I, if I had a powerful enough torch I would have seen the reds of their eyes and I really enjoy that I think, I think it's extraordinary to be so close to the wild and yet to have all the comforts of home Are the bears visiting? They, they keep a low profile I see the odd footprint. Lucky you. Yeah, I know. I know we are lucky, and I know that's a problem in some places. But we are, we are lucky. The, 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 the apples disappear overnight from the orchard, things like that. You know, but uh, we haven't encountered any personally. You, you, you have a problem, not you, but your community and uh, the whole country have a big problem, a big issue with the garbage. Yes. Uh, it, it's the reason why the bears are coming to, to eat from the village. Yeah, it's, it's one of the reasons. And I think especially in beauty spots around places like Butchech, uh, Retazat, etc. People go and have their picnics in the wild and they leave half-eaten food and sandwiches. They don't put them in a bin and they don't, most, most importantly, take their trash home with them. And this brings the animals down and, you know, the bears rifle through. And there aren't necessarily even bins. And if there are bins, there are very few bear-proof bins. So this habituates spares to humans much more because they, they, they come down closer to the communities where you have these picnic areas and, and that is a big problem but apart from that it's the environmental damage that it does as well you know to the ecosystem and and to the look of you know the place really if we we want to encourage tourists to come from all over the world and appreciate the amazing breathtaking landscapes we have here in Romania we have to keep it clean because tourists arriving in Otapen and driving up the Prahava Valley you know it looks like a kind of Banksy Christmas along the along the sides of the rivers you know you've got plastic hanging from the trees you've got bottles and beer cans everywhere and it's very hard because people chuck their trash in the river or it gets into the river systems and and stays stuck in the bushes and, and you know on the side of, of, of picnic routes and footpaths you know it's really bad and this creates the impression in the mind of foreigners that the Romanian people don't have any respect for themselves or any respect for their landscape or, or their natural heritage that they are the custodians but of. But do they? Well, I, I hope that, that, that lots of people listening to this will say, well, I do, and, and that's fantastic, but there, there is, however many out there that don't. And I see people chucking cans out of their car when they're driving along or, you know, picnicking and just leaving their rubbish by, by the side of the road. And, and it, is, it is really, really sad because it's such a beautiful country. And, and, I, and I think tourism depends on it staying beautiful and I think Romania has a lot that other countries don't have it has it's it's got the lungs of Europe it's a custodian of the the largest mixed forest left in Europe two-thirds of the bear population the wolves the lynx you know the, this is this is a great treasure to have this incredible biodiversity but it needs looking after and I think we if we're going to use this as an export for Romania come to the wild corner of Europe which we did when we did a BBC campaign last year we rebranded Romania in every country in Europe and America and the Middle East through BBC World. We tried to get the government to give us some money. They refused to give us money. So we went to the private sector. We raised 45,000 euros in about two and a half weeks because a lot of
lot of people thought this was a good idea, and we had the most successful campaign pretty much in the history of Romania promoted abroad, um, because BBC World is 465 million people worldwide, and they're all people that can travel and speak more than one language. So Romania, we had four films running, and it was come, you know, visit, you know, the wild corner of Europe, journey to the wild side kind of thing, and and this was this was a, a big success, and people looked at Romania in a different way, and I think this is a unique selling point for the country, but we have to keep it beautiful. So take your trash home with you. Also, level two is not just taking one's own trash home, but if you're out in the wilds and you see a plastic bottle or something, pick it up and take that home with you as well. You know, because the more we can do to keep it pristine, the better. Uh, how long was your journey to Bucharest? Uh, five hours. Five yeah, hours? Yeah, nearly five hours, about four, four and a half. For yeah. 200 and... Yeah, so. uh, to be fair, we often go the other way because I know how bad that road is now. But it is, it's a major problem for, the, for tourism as well, not just for the people that commute, that work, and they lose hours and hours of, of, of working time stuck in their car. Uh, but also, you know, for tourists that come, they, they spend four or five hours trying to get up to Transylvania, and, and, and that's their first impression. And it's not great. They're losing holiday time. And if they, if they think, well, I'm going to have to do that on the way back, people are going to think, well, do I really want to go to Romania and spend 10 hours in a car just before I start my holiday? You know, they're all, you know, there and at the end. Or shall I go somewhere like Croatia or wherever, where, the, where, where it's cleaner and the roads are better? So we kind of need, need to sort that out. And, and also it's a problem for, for Bucharest as well because what will happen is people won't fly to Bucharest anymore and that means they'll check out the city and maybe do a bit of, a bit of city tours as well, you know, and see some of the sites. They'll fly to Sibiu or Brasov as soon as they can, as soon as Brasov Airport finally opens because they can miss that out. Um, and a lot of tourists just want to eventually end up in Transylvania so Bucharest won't get a look in. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, that's a bit of a disaster for the capital, I would, have, I would have thought. So, a movie, yes. a film about, about the Danube, Danube Delta. Delta. Yes. Why? Well, we did Wild Carpathia 1 to 5. Yeah. It was a trilogy in five parts, like Douglas Adams, you know, <laughs> Hitchhiker's Guide. And I, I love the Delta. We included a bit of it when we did episode 2, Journey from the Mountains to the Sea, and it, it was amazing. Um, and so it was really the, the last place in terms of regions to promote left to do. And it's very important that the Delta gets promoted properly. Historically, it's never been promoted properly. No government has done a decent job of promoting Romania, uh, well, the whole country, but also, you know, more specifically, the Danube Delta abroad. And, and it is, you know, as we are now trying to, to say, the Amazon of Europe. You know, it is the Amazon of Europe. If you think about that, people go, wow. You know, it's over 4,000 square kilometers of lakes, reed beds, waterways, birds, animals, flora. You know, it is quite an extraordinary place. And it's a, a jewel, or should be a jewel, in the crown of Romanian should tourism. Be. It should be. Um, but it's not, because not much is being done about promoting it. So we had this opportunity to do a whole episode for a whole year charting the seasons from winter all the way through spring, summer, autumn, back to winter again. And to tell the story of, of the flora and the fauna, of the landscapes, the changing colours, um, and, and the people that live there, you know, the culture, the, the lives of the fishermen, the people trying to make money from tourism, the, the, the people who are, who, are, who are there on the ground, and, and you know, from, from the monks in the monasteries to the fishermen in the boats. And it was a really interesting cultural experience, and we were able to get right beneath the surface and look at all the things that make it beautiful and unique, and also the things that are presenting problems. So the challenges to overcome. You are living on a hillside. You've seen so many places. You've yeah. seen so many beautiful places. Why did you like Danube Delta? Because it's, it's uh, pristine still in many places. It's unique in the whole of Europe. There's nowhere else like it. Therefore, it's an amazing, fantastic opportunity for Romania to have tourists not just coming from you know, internally, but from all over the world, not just Europe. I mean, we're going to, this is such an incredible place that, you know, if we promote it properly, we'll have Americans turning up, Australians turning up, or people from all over the globe coming to see what the Delta has to offer, because there's nowhere else like it. And so I wanted to show that, and I wanted to show the beauty of it in the wintertime as well as in the summer, because it is bleak, but it's gorgeous. And those, those, the, the snowdrifts and the ice, uh, you know, and the solitary, 
Dalmatian pelicans, and you know, you'll see from the film. You know, but it was very uh, important for me to try to capture the spirit of the place. In an interview on February, I think you you said, "Let's be honest, the Danube Delta is in danger." Yeah. There are many illegal constructions. There are fishing problems. There is pollution. Correct. Uh, is there any solution to that? There are a number of solutions. I mean, let's take the overfishing for one thing. Right? The, 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 one of the problems is that historically the fishermen take the fish they catch to a depot. Mm -hmm. They can't sell it direct to the restaurants, for example. So they, they then sell, they sell to a distributor, if you like, and then that goes, they, those depots, they sell it on as a selling organization, and they up the price. You know, to, I don't know how much more, but it could be triple the price the fishermen get paid for the fish. So, so they're not able to realize enough money from selling the fish directly to restaurants or, or, or hotels. And that, that's, that seems, you know, as local producers, you know, you're allowed to sell your organic vegetables in a market. It should be okay for that to happen and that would bring them more money because it's very tough being a fisherman in the winter you know it's really really tough and then there's only seasons that you can fish and then only if the conditions are right uh, and, and it's a big struggle and lots of them have left and then you know some are resorting to poaching to try to you know get the money in and, and that's creating problems as we all know um, and, and I think regulation and, and actually helping these people I think is vitally important so we have that we have the pollution we have no regulation of, of speedboats, for example, in the Delta. Um, you're supposed to pay something to, to go and visit the Delta, but there are so many points where tourists can get on board and go in that there's no regulation of that whatsoever. And that should not be money that's, that's, that's um, obtained to keep, you know, policing the Delta and making sure that there aren't transgressions, that people don't drive at 100 miles an hour through flocks of pelicans and things like this. Uh, so also, you know, day trips. Day trips to the Delta is a really bad idea because you just go for a few hours, you don't see it properly, and you burn a whole load of fuel getting down that, and then a whole load of fuel into the water for taking those boats. So we do have a lot of people going to see it, but you have to see it in the right way. I'm not saying everyone should go in a canoe, but, you know, if you go and you stay for a couple of days, you're putting more of your money into the economy. You're helping people have alternative sources of revenue from, from fishing. Um, Ecotourism, homestays, gastro points, that kind of thing. Uh, and, and that adds value and it, and, and it provides, as I say, much needed income to some of the poorer people and poorer communities there. Do you think these special places should have their own police? I, I, think, yeah, I, I, I think there needs Is to be more... Is that a solution? Well, you've got, well, look, you've got a number of agencies in the Delta. I think there are seven. Um, you know, for the, the, for the biosphere reserve, mm -hmm. uh, the, 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 the county council, you know, and, the, and they don't communicate much between each other. So it's very hard to, to achieve any kind of consensus to come up with some positive plans to affect change. Uh, dredging, for example, is, is a big controversial issue at the moment. But uh, if they don't dredge the channels that are supposed to be open for tourism, then there are less and less routes the tourists can take, so you get more and more heavy traffic on those routes. There are official routes that tourists are allowed to go on through the Delta, you know, circuits if you like, and I know seven or eight of them. But they can only go through a, a small part of those circuits because the channels and the lakes have been allowed to silt up to the point where that's becoming untenable. So you're pushing more traffic through smaller areas and then people decide, oh, well, look, we'll take you somewhere else and they'll, they'll go off piste. Uh, and then they smash all the nets of the fishermen, they go through areas that are supposed to be for the fishermen to fish, uh, and also they're polluting areas that are supposed to be pristine. Uh, and it's, th there isn't enough regulation of this. And then, you know, you mentioned that I said about the, the um, overdevelopment. Mm -hmm. Again, mm -hmm. you, you have a big problem with, with construction in the Delta. There's no regulation of what kind of buildings people can put up on the side of the riverbanks. And uh, so, yeah, concrete hotels are springing up everywhere, three, four stories high. They shouldn't be allowed to be above a certain height. I, in fact, I believe the regulation says they shouldn't be above two or three floors. Uh, and ideally, you need to use traditional materials like reed, etc. Um, this is just not happening and you know people are building without permission and then once they put the last tile in someone comes along and says oh that's illegal you know you, you can't have that so they say what do I do so well, you've got to go and you've got to go and see this agency will tell you oh you have to take it down so, so you just built it and then they make you take it down which is again creating huge environmental problems 
And you then go to get a permit to take it down and they say, no, you can't take it down because that will have even more impact than leaving it where it is. So effectively, you've got a license to build whatever you like and it's almost impossible to police. And again, the garbage problem. And again, the garbage problem, which is people coming. It's not, there's this illusion that it comes from upstream, you know, that it's actually Germany's fault. Yes, yes, it's coming Austria's from all, fault. all so over Austrians Europe. are doing yeah, it. Yeah. It's not, it's us. And, and, and the vast, you know, 80% probably of the garbage in the Danube Delta comes from the Danube Delta uh, and it, it's, it's caused by bad waste management um, for the villages and communities in and around the Delta but it's also the tourists that come here uh, or, uh, you know spend days there and camp on the riverbanks uh, and just leave their trash lying around and it just clogs the whole system up and, it, and it's terrible I mean you'll see from the film we were talking to some fishermen and they're just lamenting how much it's changed in 10-20 years and, and you know I, I don't understand how people who who come to see something beautiful actually contribute to making it ugly you know if you're coming to appreciate it why would you take your can of fizzy drink and chuck it over the side of the boat or leave your beer cans there on the shore or plastic bottles or tin foil I mean you know it's 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 just it's weird I, I, I don't I don't guess it you know but they do and they do in the thousands and that's something we need to change really urgently so we'll watch the the, the film tonight yes. together with together with the whole world I hope so yes this is this is the dream so it's going to be streamed live on DigiLive as well as on, on Digi24. On our my, channel. Yes, yeah. as well as on your channel. So my dream is for everybody listening to this to immediately, because you haven't got much time, yeah. obviously, yeah. to get on social media in the next you know, a few hours, a couple of hours, whatever it is, and, uh, and tell all your friends on Facebook, especially your Romanian friends living abroad, to share the link for DigiLive and say 10 o'clock, Romanian time, this is going out. It's a feature length movie. We, we, we got an hour, and, it's an hour and a half pretty much now. Well, it's supposed to be 45 minutes, but there's just too much to say and too much to show. So they have time and share it with your friends. And if we can engage with all the Romanians living abroad and they engage with all their friends, hundreds of friends they have each on Facebook, and put that link up there and say it's coming on in, a, in an hour and a half or whenever they do it, then we can turn this into a global event because people all over the world will be able to watch this. You know, it might might be harder for the Australians waking up, you know, at four in the morning to do it. But, you know, let's say Europe, at least. Uh, and the more people that see how beautiful the Delta is, the more people we can bring to Romania next year as, as things open up again. I mean, we desperately need to promote tourism in this country, not just the Delta, but the whole country. The government have done absolutely nothing about it. They're so useless, they can't even get to, you know, organise a government, let alone, you know, without teaming up with arch enemies and the rest of it uh, and, and let alone have a ministry of tourism mm -hmm. that actually promotes this country abroad it, it's, there's, there's not been an effective ministry of, of tourism for I don't know how long and I mean the last one was merged with several other ministries as well um, and, and, and you know that didn't have the resources to do the job we had to be doing we were the ministry of tourism you know the last year and a half we were the only ones doing stuff promoting Romania abroad I mean this 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 year there hasn't been a single exhibition yeah. uh, outside the country that Romania's bothered to go to uh, and th th this, th the, the big problem is with COVID people are stopping they're not going long haul anymore because it's too scary they don't they don't travel long haul but they can still do they think well less chance of getting COVID if I just fly for a couple of hours and it's not logical but that's what they're doing and we have this opportunity it's a great leveler to open up now to advertise Romania to the world and say you know to Europe and say here you go come to a wild place where you can get away from people, you know, isolated villages, remote castles, wild space, forests, lonely mountains. And, and this is something and I, I think that, that, that will really, really be a, a hugely appealing to a European audience. Uh, and yet we don't have anyone to do it. So we need to do it now. Every other country is doing it. Poland, you know, Slovenia is doing it. Croatia is doing it. They're all advertising, not just on BBC World, but on, you know, CNN and everything. And they're getting ahead of the game. And, and we need to grab the tourists because they're planning now for next year. Uh, and we have to make sure they come back because all the hotels, the restaurants in this country, they're struggling. Okay, there's a lot of domestic tourism, but there are many, many businesses that are really on the brink of collapse because of the pandemic. And we have to support them, not just by not going abroad and spending our money here in Romania, but also by encouraging other people to come here and, and, and experience how beautiful Romania is.
Thank you very much, Charlie Oakley. Cu plăcere, cu drag. În studioul Digi24. Vedem filmul.